So Alicia says, uh, hello, everyone. I am hoping I can get some help. I have a user that has edit access to a SharePoint online team site, and yet they get the access denied message when they go to it. She can get everywhere else in SPO without issue. It is just this specific team site. So I know she is not logged in incorrectly. I have removed all of her permissions and re-added her. I have added her by herself and added her as a member of to a group. Still gets the access denied message. I always appreciate when they clearly have run through, have you tried turning it off and on again? You know, <laughs> all the yeah. scenarios just to cover. Um, uh, let's see, still gets the access denied message. We, uh, uh, when uh, she has requested access and I have approved it and she clicks on the links and still gets access denied. I made sure she was not in any limited access groups. We finally added her as a team, as a member of the team's team and that did get her access to the site. However, I really do not want her to have access to the team. I did check the all people to, to make sure there weren't any duplicates of her account on the site, and that was not an issue either. Any other ideas before I reach out to Microsoft? So many ideas, so <laughs> many. <laughs> it's always permissions, it always is. permissions. Always. When that problem. Especially when it comes to groups as well and the way that groups is structured. Right. So what she needs to understand, and the key phrase in that whole thing is she added her to a member of the team's team. Mm. That SharePoint site, when you look at the title, there's a little team icon next to the name indicating this is a Teams enabled site. So those team permissions are intertwined, mm. right? Yeah. So you, you can't disconnect and give her part of one thing and not part of all of it. Now, um, so how how do we, this comes down to what's your problem? What's the business problem? How, why does she need access to this, but you don't want her to have access to the team? And but, if, but I would look at it slightly different though. I mean, if, if there are 10 employees and they've set up the profiles and nine of them can get in with that, that permission setting, one cannot. That's what I think she's outlining here is that she's, this this user's profile should be identical, but there's something that's hung up that's not allowing her to get access to that site. Even when she uses the request access, it's approved and not allowed back in. So there's something that's going on with that user profile. There's yeah. some level, somewhere there's permissions that are denying her direct access to that SharePoint online site. The way I've kind of gone at it sometimes is uh, I've got the path of the file. I've gone in private in Edge browser or an incognito and then done a, a sort of a fresh sort of login to double check and make sure it's not jumping to a personal email address automatically and saying you're denied. Like it's sometimes it's kind of got your cached account and you if like I know that I've got multiple and across different clients let alone my own and personal and business and so sometimes I will get that you know and if I go in private mode and have a look and see if it's allowing me through there just in case it's something that's on the cached side of things um but you know there's that as you said it's a group it's all quite tied in together the fact that when they've added them to a team like physically at they're fine when they've come into the team so you then have to go well what's going on um for the, is it a private team too to know is it like a private channel do you have private channels are they trying to get to information that sits in a private channel which is then separated again kind of thing and then you're not really part of the team so there's you know lots of different combinations that could be going on too and the SharePoint admin in me wants to go into the advanced permissions yeah. in the SharePoint site and yeah. look at number one, there's the check permissions button that lets you say, here's the account. What permissions does this person have and where? And it will give you a whole list of everything they have. And I'll, I'll provide a link for that, yeah. um, how to do that for you, Christian, if you want that. And then, yeah, please. Um, and then also, if she, if you in the SharePoint site, I haven't tried this, but in my mind, I'm thinking you can create a different permission group and but, give different access to that. But I don't think that applies to like the main document library that is tied to the team. It would have to be a separate document library that you can break the permissions on because that main document library, I don't believe you can. So I've had this exact experience with my own profile and struggling oh. with getting in there. And I think it kind of goes to kind of what you just said, uh, Sherry, is that 
what happened was my profile, or the, just like this, I believe in this case, this end user's profile, there's a subset of permissions that are set up with specific roles, and that role, that mm -hmm. link is limiting their access to it. So there's a rule in there somewhere in those roles. So by going in there and understanding what are the other permissions and look at and two, look at that employee, that end user versus somebody that should be identical and what groups they're members of and see the differences there because there could be some compliance, some regulatory rule, something that's put in place that's not allowing those things. Other times where I've seen that is that somebody was mistakenly um, added to like a vendor group. It was an employee, but they were put, added to a vendor group to help manage that vendor group, but it classified them as an external user. And so then it limited them in a bunch of different ways. And so clearly it's a SharePoint permission issue. By adding to Teams, that is overriding that, giving that user access, but you still, but that that problem remains. Uh, and, and so obviously you don't want to give them access to everything over within in Teams. It's a short term, but I would go and look at, as you said, look at all the permission sets and you go and have to identify what that is. Unfortunately, I mean, there's third party tools like my company provides um, that make that process a lot easier to root that out. But I think fundamentally that's what it is. There is a rule that's been set that is blocking that user. And that's, it's just identifying what that is. And they could have, they could be in different groups that are clashing on their permissions. So, you know, to your point, right? So that one's overriding the other, it should, it should give you the more lenient of the permissions, but that's not always the case. So, yep. Then, I mean, another alternative is, do they need to actually have them in, if it's just one file and it's consistent access and it's only just a couple, do they have to have access to the team? Can you just create another repository that they access those files that's separate. I'm just going to attach them to an email and send it yet another copy out. <laughs> uh, you know, it doesn't seem. What's your fax just, number? What's your yeah, fax number? <laughs> Alex, no, Alex, give it a Alex. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know what? I mean, does it really need to be something that's sitting in part of that team? Well, we often have it where we've got a vendor group and we've got information over there for external parties and then our own group here. You know, is it something like to do something like that. Or, you know, when we get into the interesting and um, uh, not not as well liked yet shared channels, can it be something that's a channel that's specific for a certain group of people that have got to have certain access to that content? So, <clears throat> yeah. coming i was thinking sending it via e-fax i mean we're not animals <laughs> you know still digital